Welcome to another episode of The Tech Vault with Mitchell Sellers. Today, I thought I would talk about a really fun situation or business decision, if you will, and that is whether or not we should pin our .NET and MAUI versions within our applications. Uh, this is something that I've talked about at a lot of conferences and events, and it just so happens that this week, the week of December uh, 16th, uh, 2025, yet another situation has came up reminding me that, you know what, maybe we should reconsider what we're doing. And so I thought I'd just kind of start out with showing folks, you know, what, what we've ran into and, you know, the default behaviors. If you file a new project, a a .NET MAUI project, you're not going to get a global JSON. You're not going to have your versions pinned to a specific version, but you're going to be pinned within the major version that you're in. So if you are in a .NET 9 project, as things roll forward, you're going to get the latest version of the .NET 9 SDK. You're not going to go to .NET 10, but you're going to roll forward um, within the .NET 9 space. If you go to .NET 10, et cetera. Same thing happens with .NET MAUI. Now, historically speaking, I've been a big fan of not pinning back the versions. There's downsides, right? If we don't pin that version back and you build today and you build tomorrow and you're on a hosted runner that has updates, you might get different build results of the same code because your SDK versions may have changed. With how fast things are changing, it's absolutely a risk. The way I've looked at it though is the upside to this risk is always the fact that, hey, I'm gonna be on the latest and greatest. But what comes with that is build errors, versioning issues, or limitations. And I thought I'd talk about this week's example of what happened to just make sure that, you know, to start the conversation, I'd love to see people's comments uh, on the video here and your experience. What is your experience? What, what's been your take from an organization perspective um, regarding pinning versions and, and limiting that roll forward? Because on the surface, I want to stay latest and greatest on all things .NET, right? We get security patches. We get updates. I want things on the latest version. For our MAUI projects, I want things to be able to have the latest support for the latest versions of iOS and the latest versions of Android, right? That's the behavior I want. However, what I don't want is I don't want my dev teams losing a bunch of time. And there's definitely some interesting trade-offs when we, when we look at this and how we might want to handle it from an organization perspective. This week, a new version of the .NET 10 SDK came out. So for one of our internal projects, the build that had been running successfully, all of a sudden started throwing this error message on Tuesday afternoon. No code changes, just another build. And the key piece here is this version of .NET requires 26.2. That's not good, right? Our target framework is still .NET 10, iOS, everything else, no big deal. We look into the error message just a little bit more. We can see here that the current version of Xcode is 26.1.1, which makes sense. That's what we have on our, our system. So the first thing we do, right? Oh, okay, is this just as simple as updating our build script, right? Our build script, we are specifically setting what Xcode version we want. Okay, no big deal. Update our build script, we change our build script to uh, 26.2, right? Simple fix, life's gonna be easy, right? No big deal. Well, what happened then is the fun set of next issues. Now, when I go to actually try to force that, it wasn't that simple, right? I'm trying to set it to 26.2. However, none of my available versions on my GitHub Actions runner are there. Oh no, what do I do, right? Now I've got a problem. I can't build my apps. I can't get things working from an iOS perspective and I'm on a hosted runner. I'm using the out of the box Mac, Mac OS latest is the, is the runner that I was using. So on Monday, my project built, life was good. 
Tuesday, my project isn't building. Now I have two things I could do, right? I could quickly pin my release back to what I was using last week and everything would be fine. But then my developers that have had their workstations updated, my QA team that probably had their environments updated, right? They're going to have a different set of problems, right? We can pin versions back really easily by the use. And this just is an example that I had from a .NET 9 pinning, but you could absolutely update this to be uh, appropriate for .NET 10. Um, but we can pin the SDK version, which is our .NET version. We can pin our workload version, which is going to be the versions of the Maui workload. And then we can control whether or not you know, we have roll forward or whether or not we allow pre-release, you know, those kinds of things. So I can do this. The problem is, is that then my developers have to make sure that they haven't rolled forward as well. So if your development teams are updating Visual Studio and Visual Studio automatically does things, well, then they may have the same problem that the build environment has, right? Really a great thing. So let's double back. Let's take a look then at, you know, what what is this update release thing look like, right? So my runner doesn't support 26.2. Well, we go digging over here to the GitHub runner images repository, right? Which is the driver of everything else. This here, we can see that there's an open issue. This issue is still open, by the way, for adding Xcode 26.2. And start digging in the notes here. It's talking about the changes that are needed. We read into some of the comments here. And again, we've got a number of different things that are opened or references, referenced, but we have an RC available, but we don't have the real thing. And it's like, okay, well, this thing is merged. Okay, well, that thing, 13.444. Okay, well, 13.444. Oh, okay, well, this is good. Mac OS ARM 20, Mac 20, OS 26 ARM, 64 image update okay we can see here that this then updates it removes the release candidate replaces it with the real app okay that's awesome right this was created two days ago right so on the 16th at 11 13 a.m now keep in mind my builds are already broken so we get down here and one of the comments say, hey, when are we expecting to merge this and be available? So this was then yesterday, the 17th at 12, 13 p.m. Not a big deal, right? But now we have a full business day and a little bit more of things being broken. The comment reply here, which I absolutely love and appreciate. So I'm not, no shade cast to, to the GitHub team. I think this is absolutely a fantastic work. But now they say 48 plus or minus 12 hours in our expectations. That was yesterday at around 1 p.m. This pull request got merged in and committed to main 13 hours ago, basically 3, 8, 3, 10 a.m. my time this morning, the 18th of December. Okay, awesome. Now we've got support for this release. Right now, I've got a new target modifier, uh, a, a new target identifier that I can use to run my actions, and I should be able to update. So that's exactly what I was able to do. I was able to go in and update my build process, and be able to switch over to run on a different runner. So now I'm running on the Mac OS dash twenty six. Now I'm able to force my Xcode version to be 26.2.0. My .NET project builds and runs successfully. So this is where the rub comes in when we talk about pinning versions. By not pinning my versions, I had a window of about 40 hours where this project for iOS would not build successfully. For what we have going on with this application, for the goals and, and things that I'm trying to work with, it wasn't the end of the world for me to not have that project be able to build. Sometimes it's easier, right? If the support was already there, if the OS and the runner image was already done, I might not have had as much time. And this is where I think it's a really calculated decision amongst dev teams. 
We have some of our dev teams that have identified issues that we need to pin back and that creates some tension and turmoil within our developers that maybe work with different projects. So really what I wanted to kind of start with here today is just asking the greater community, are you pinning? What's your pin criteria? But then if you pin, how and when do you manage when you roll forward? Because one of the biggest things that we found is that for the dev teams that are pinning back, so for example, a dev team that pinned back to .NET 9.305 SDK, when are they going to actually do that update? Do you manage that within your development cycles? Do you manage that in you know, your day-to-day -day backlog and it becomes a tech task or whatever that process is? Um, but definitely something to be thinking about, right? It is a bigger issue for pinning, in my opinion, when we're dealing with Maui, because we have such a different dependency with the workloads. We have the iOS impacts, the Android impacts, and all of those different things that kind of come into play. It's still important for other project types as well, but it's absolutely more important on the .NET MAUI side. I would absolutely love to hear your opinions, what you're doing with your team, and really more importantly, I just wanna make sure that everybody was you know, out there and thinking about this because it's absolutely something that is going to impact you at some point if you're working with MAUI and having a plan or knowing what happens or knowing where to go look is one of the biggest things that will make it easier for you to be able to get things done. Um, hope you have a great holiday. I will most likely be recording another episode um, next week throughout the holidays, but I look forward to uh, seeing you again next time here on the Tech Vault.